Recording now? And make sure I'm not sharing. Perfect. All right. So just a little bit about who we are, who I am, and what we do, and then what this session is about. So my name is Maisha Robertson. I am the president of the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of the National Black MBA Association. Um, our association is a 501c3 nonprofit association. Um, we are a part of the National Black MBA Association, which is the national organization that guides all 42 chapters um, of what we do in this space. And so our organization, San Francisco Bay Area chapter, was established in 1979. Um, by several Black area professionals um, just to help advance the mission of the National Black MBA. Um, and so if you didn't know, um, the mission of the National Black MBA is to empower visionaries intellectually and economically to create a world where diversity and inclusion are universal. Our chapter, I'm super happy to say this, because our chapter represents over 400 students, entrepreneurs, and professionals in Northern California. And so um, if you didn't know, our chapter covers the Bay Area, of course, so all the counties within the Bay Area, but we also expand up towards Sacramento County, between the Bay Area and Sacramento, and down to Fresno County. So we are a really big organization, and so that's why we say we are one of the premier, organization, premier Black business organizations in the Bay Area. I'm so super excited to have everybody here on, everybody that registered. Um, if you weren't able to make it, you get to view this recording, so we appreciate you um, actually registering and trying to take the time out of your day. We know how busy it is with Zoom world and everybody having back-to-back -back meetings, so we do appreciate you taking time to register. Um, and I, one more thing I want to say, um, so I'm super proud of our organization, and um, this is our first first webinar since uh, 2021. We took a break uh, for, a, for January and February. Um, and so I just want to share with you guys some of our 2021 market impacts. Um, we did increase our chapter membership by 40% uh, from 2021 to 2022. So super proud of all the work that our leadership team and board of directors have done um, to help increase our membership. Um, last year, we hosted over 25 virtual professional development, career focus, educational and entrepreneur type of fireside chats and workshops and webinars. And so super excited to continue what, the work that we did from 2021 to 2022. Um, and excited about, again, our Leaders of Tomorrow students who are on this call as well. Um, they are, we have a, a brand new bunch of students. Um, so we have 16 students that signed up um, and a good number of students that we are hopeful to take to our Leaders of Tomorrow competition in June. So if you are um, able to mentor and want to support, we still have opportunities available. And so that is a little about, a bit about our chapter, who I am, what we do. And so I'm going to pass it to Israel. His screen is shared. We're going to get started with this session. And uh, just thumbs up. Hey, Carl, if you could hear me all the way. And thumbs up when Israel comes on to make sure that you can hear Israel. There we Take go. Take away, Israel. Perfect. Thank you so much for that introduction. Congratulations on, on the success. And, you know, no pressure kicking off your 2022 webinar series. I mean, it is quite the honor to be with you guys this afternoon to spend time sharing with you some best practices on how to go about your job search. So the whole uh, purpose of today's webinar is to show you how to utilize um, uh, tools that Google offers to help improve your job search, to help you stay on track, and most importantly, tips for how to land that job. So. If you're not familiar with the Grow with Google program, quickly, I'll mention that the Grow with Google program is an initiative that Google launched to help job seekers and entrepreneurs um, to succeed online. I mentioned in the chat that today I, I offered a webinar earlier today, and it was actually a webinar for small businesses on how to reach customers through Google. And so today's uh, afternoon presentation is all about the job search um, capabilities. So if you're interested in learning more about the Grow with Google program, the tools that Google offers, you know, Google just recently launched a certification. Um, so you can actually get certified in some of these products. So for the students that are in, in, um, in attendance today, these are great things that you can complete 
that you can include on your resume. So I invite you to go to grow um, google.com forward slash grow to learn more. And obviously I wanna thank the, uh, the uh, MBA Association for the invite, but also for um, the partnership with the Grow With Google program. It's because of partners like you that we're able to offer these types of webinars. So I appreciate the invite and I appreciate you guys hosting me this afternoon. I do wanna quickly plug that this is the first of three webinars that we're gonna be offering. So this is a Grow With Google series. Um, you can see on your screen that I'm gonna be coming back um, in a couple of weeks to talk to you about how to improve your resume with practical strategies. So here and through this exercise, um, through that webinar, I should say, we're gonna be looking at resume examples. I'm gonna be giving feedback on what do recruiters look for when they are searching through the piles and piles of resumes that are coming in. So that webinar will be more focused on the things you should be including in your resume, the templates that you should be using, okay? And then I'm gonna come back in May to offer you a webinar that's gonna be all about video marketing, specifically about um, video marketing on YouTube. So it's twofold, right? The first part is video marketing in general. Um, my understanding is that we've got some serial entrepreneurs um, on who also have side gigs or side hustles, which, you know, more power to you. And um, YouTube can be a great platform to, to be able to grow your business. But even if you are a thought leader within your industry, right? This is a platform like YouTube can allow you to gain exposure, gain following. And so that webinar is gonna be all about video marketing best practices and then walking you through how to create a YouTube channel and how to keep that YouTube channel organized, okay? So I don't know if we could drop, I don't know if the webinars are posted on the calendar, but um, if not, we can always um, send you guys a link afterwards on where to register for, for the series, okay? I'll drop the link. Perfect, thank you. And then last but not least, so quickly, my name is Israel Serna. Um, as you guys have already heard, I'm joining you virtually from Orange County, California. So I'm in Southern California, um, not too far. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I provided you with my contact information. So whether you're active on LinkedIn, which I see that several of you are, um, or you want to email me afterwards, that's fine too. Um, my contact information is on, on the screen. Um, you know, on LinkedIn, I take pride in, in the network that I build because I think that LinkedIn is a very powerful tool, as you know, some of you know. Uh, but this is a great place for networking. I often share you know, uh, best practices tips, articles to job seekers, and then occasionally do share um, job opportunities that have been posted within my network. So feel free to um, look for me on LinkedIn and send me an invite. I'd love to connect with you. All right, so let's kind of level set the, the conversation by just quickly sort of acknowledging the environment that we're in, right? I think these last two years really impacted job seekers in a lot of ways and even just employees in a lot of ways. And I, I truly believe that in these last two years and in the upcoming years that um, us um, professionals are going to learn how to work differently, right? There's a shift happening, right? You're probably already feeling it. And the reality is that some people may be struggling with finding job opportunities because you aren't seeing people face-to-face -face as often, right? Students, for example, maybe um, were used to walking into a job resource center on campus and maybe you're not back to an in-person teaching, right? So there's been a lot of challenges that have come with the, with the last two years, being at home, right? If you have a family at home, you know, we love our families, but they can be distracting, right? If we're focused on, on looking for jobs. And then also remote work options. So for some of you, this may be something new that you never even thought about, right? You may be looking for a job for the first time where it's gonna be a fully remote job. So these are things that are impacting the way that we look for jobs and the way that we land jobs, okay? So I think it's important to, to mention that. I'll share with you that um, 
Uh, I was a pandemic hire. So I actually have a full-time job with a software company, a SaaS company. And I experienced this in the middle of the, of, of, of the pandemic. I, I got hired in July. So I went through the hiring process 100% remotely. So I understand and I feel what you may be experiencing um, in your own job search currently. So some best practices that we just like to kind of share with you is that job searching and job seeking is a full-time job. <laughs> it's overwhelming, it's exhausting, it's emotional. Uh, it's a roller coaster. You, you, you probably know this, right? And so I think it's important for us to really keep track and keep to schedule and build yourself a routine of when you're going to be looking for jobs. Like I know when I was looking for jobs, my Saturday mornings with my cup of coffee were like my time, right? And I would dedicate an hour and I would be very careful not to over exhaust myself with looking to too many jobs at once because it's overwhelming, right? So I think it's um, these, these tips that we're sharing with you are just things that I think are helpful for you to maybe remind yourself of or consider as you start to um, your journey in, in looking for a job. So on today's agenda, we're gonna demonstrate how to manage the main task of job search. We're gonna, I'm gonna share with you how to create a job search tracker in Google Sheets. Um, that actually reminds me, I would love to know in the chat, if you can let me know, how many of you are already utilizing Google tools? And, and it doesn't have to be like every day or that I'm asking if you're an expert. I'm just curious. Uh, thank you. I, I see a thumbs up. Um, so if you want to give me a thumbs up or in the chat, let me know that would be helpful. Um, and then I'm going to show you, you know, how to keep track of your jobs through, um, through, this, uh, through Google Sheets. I'm going to then walk you through Google Search. So the actual functionality of being able to find job opportunities on Google Search. We're going to look at Google Docs and how to create a resume through one of the Google templates. And then um, wrap it up with walking you through how a tool like Google Meet can help you prepare for your interviews. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. The way that I give this presentation, by the way, is that it's partially slides and then demo. Um, I feel like if I just did all slides, it could be like a little monotonous. And I actually like to just get into the platforms and show you in real time um, how these tools work, okay? So as you hear me talk about these Google tools, you probably know this, especially if you are already a Google um, user, is that to access any of the tools that I'm gonna be talking to you about today, you have to create a Google account, okay? Now, let me clarify that this is not a Gmail account. I think oftentimes people think, oh, I need a Gmail account, but you need a Google account. And it doesn't matter what email you use. The important thing is that you use an email that you're going to check frequently because Google will be communicating with you with updates and things like that. So um, the key thing is you don't need a Gmail address. I would recommend that you use an email address that you're gonna check frequently, okay? That's the key. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through um, where these tools are, okay? So as some of you know that Google um, offers a ton of applications, right? Everything from Google Sheets to Google Docs to YouTube, okay? A lot of people don't know this, but Google owns YouTube. So YouTube is part of the family of Google applications, okay? So on your screen is essentially you're looking at a look at where you would go to um, um, access those, um, those applications. Now, I'll, I'll point this out when we go into the live demo, but um, the Google Drive is probably one of my favorite tools and I'm gonna spotlight why, but in a minute, you're gonna see how we can get to that area, okay? So first thing we're gonna talk about is Google Sheets. So Google Sheets are allow you to create a file to be able to keep track of things, right? So it's, you can do equations, you can create tablets. So it's a very functional um, application that by the way, lives in the cloud, okay? So unlike other platforms, at, you know, utilizing Google Sheets and Google Docs means that you're actually accessing these tools 
in the cloud, okay? So what I'd like to do today as part of the demo is share with you what, what Google Sheets or how Google Sheets can help you stay organized as you start your journey of applying for jobs. Um, can you confirm that you, can, that you see my Google screen? Okay, perfect. So again, we're looking at what probably is a very familiar landing page for many of you, right? Now, I'm going to point out a couple of things. So under the Applications tab, which is located here, as I mentioned, there are tons of applications that Google offers, and you can see them all here, okay? We're going to just focus on three today, but before I do, I, I do want to share with you why I love the Google Drive, okay? And the Google Drive essentially is a place in the cloud where you can store everything from documents to videos. For those of you that are going to be applying for jobs that require for you to share maybe a portfolio or a presentation of some sort, the Google Drive can be a great place for you to upload those files and be able to share those files through a link, okay? So the other reason why I love the Google Drive is that because with remote work being so popular these days, um, the Google Drive can offer you a place, a centralized location for you to upload documents, for you to store um, documents, images, et cetera, okay? And again, so long as you are signed into your account, you can actually access anything and everything in your Google Drive from your desktop, from your mobile devices, if you have the Google app. So it just creates a, a great place for you to store things remotely and in the cloud, okay? I don't know about you, but I, I, I live in fear of losing my laptop or damaging my laptop and then having my files go, you know, disappear. Having these on the Google Drive allow you to, you know, store them in a secure place. Okay, so with that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you that through the applications, we're gonna go to the Google Sheets tab, okay? Now, if I were to start from scratch, you would, I would go here and then, um, start or click on the add sign, okay? Now I've started a Google Sheets file already. And what I actually like to do when I'm applying for jobs, because these days you've, you're probably realizing it yourself or feeling it these days, is that there's two things that happen. One, you are just applying for a lot of jobs and it's hard for you to keep track of which ones you've applied for. But also a lot of platforms like LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, monster.com, you know, they're making it a lot easier for you to apply. And so sometimes you're, it's a, a rather quick process, right? And so for me, I like to go in and create a Google Sheets to keep track of the jobs. Now, I would love to hear from you in the chat. What are some of the other things you think are important to keep track of as you're beginning your job search? So right now, we, we have a file, right, based on, um, and as you can see, I'm customizing very easily. I love the color green. So, you know, I'm adding tabs. Um, and so it's, it's a very functional, functional tool. Now, one of the things that I like to add in addition to um, the title, the company name, sorry, I did that wrong is I like to include notes for myself because I may, you know, I may forget particular things about maybe the interview that I, that I learned in the interview. So I'm, I would go in and add notes. Are there other things that you would wanna see again in this file? Um, some people, for example, have told me, let me go to the chat real quick. Oh, I love that, um, the date that you applied. Exactly, because for me, when, uh, if you, then you can know, you know, should I follow up? You know, it's been a week. So I love that. Interview date, that's also key because once you land your, your interview, um, you can keep track. And it may be various dates, right? Dates, it may be your initial interview date and then you have to go in and update for a follow-up. Um, Cheryl's asking, um, company confirmation, that's true because some employers, they're getting better about this. They do email you saying, we received your application. I think Cheryl, that that's a really good point because we get paranoid when we don't hear from them, right? Like 
did it just go into like the abyss? Like what happened? Why, why is nobody reaching out to me? So I think that that's actually a very, very good point, Cheryl. Um, you know, in here I added remote or in office because you may actually be exclusively looking for remote jobs. So you may have to bring up the remote opportunity on an interview, right? Um, salary. Um, what somebody else in, in one of my previous ones mentioned benefits because benefits may be a driving factor, right? Do they offer benefits, 401k, healthcare insurance? And so as you can see, the, the point of what I'm trying to say, oh, Sue, perfect. I think you, we read each other's minds, Sue. Um, the, the benefits and the perks, that's another good one. Um, so why, why I share this is because, like I mentioned to you, I found myself you know, in April of, of 2020, having applied to different jobs and then feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I also, what I like to do is on this tab here, on the next tab over, I actually like to keep tabs of all the profiles that I have in the job search platforms like LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, ZipRecruiter, because sometimes what you're gonna see when we go into the job search um, functionality of Google is that some employers only accept applications on Indeed and some others on ZipRecruiter. And so then you have to create accounts. And so then it can become overwhelming to remember passwords and usernames and all that good stuff, right? So I actually like to keep tabs of all of my um, job profiles, like where, where I'm at, okay? Okay, great. So as you can see, um, this is um, highly customizable. You can, you can do this. I could even share this with um, a friend, right? If there's somebody out there that's actually helping you, um, one, of the, one of the perks of this is that you can actually share this file with a, a friend, a colleague, family members. Um, so this is just one additional aspect to, to the benefits of having it be um, a, a uh, cloud-based software, okay? Excellent. Any questions around that? Any, any thoughts? Um, so Maisha saying, well, the number of times you apply to the company be a good thing to track. That's true because there may be several job opportunities within a company. So I think that's a really good point. Um, I noticed that some employers only allow you to apply three times within a certain number of months. Some companies do have um, that as a, as, a, as a guideline. I have seen that. Okay, so now let's move on to the Google, um, finding your opportunities with Google search, okay? So, okay, so essentially what could happen or maybe one of the ways that you went about with your own job search is to go to Google and what's a very common thing is to type in jobs near me, jobs in Orange County, jobs in Santa Ana, jobs in San Francisco, right? So it's very common thing, right? And this may have been what you typed in initially. Now, what Google will do in this particular instance is that Google's actually going to scan the internet for job opportunities that meet the search that you're looking for, okay? So as you can see on the screen, and you guys can see my screen, right? We're back to the, the slides, okay. In this particular screenshot, we see that somebody typed in jobs near Memphis, Tennessee, which is a little generic, right? You know, um, when we go into, into the demo, I would actually would love a volunteer if you feel comfortable um, letting me know in the chat the type of job you're looking for and then the city that you live in, okay? Because that way I could use that as an example. So to me, this, this sort of job search that we're seeing is a little general, but the point is that Google will scan locally in Memphis, Tennessee for jobs. And what it's going to do is that it's going to compile them all in one place. So again, remember earlier I said that there are employers that post their jobs exclusively on LinkedIn or exclusively on Indeed. And so then Google is actually scanning all of those sites and bringing you all of the job opportunities that meet your search criteria, okay? Now, in addition to that, what you're going to see is that Google's going to provide a quick snippet of what this job entails. So important information like salary, job description, 
okay? And where you can apply. So as you can see, within this uh, role for, uh, uh, for an engineer role, we can see that there's several places that I could actually technically apply for this job. Now, because I already have a profile on Glassdoor, I may choose to go that route because I already have an account, right? So Google, again, is pulling all of this together. And as you can see, when you expand the search, right, you can search by titles or filter by titles. So you may be going after a director role. You may be going after a managerial, an entry level role. So you can actually filter by title, by location. I personally love the date posted because if I see a job that was posted three months ago, I'm already a little bit hesitant because they may already be well into the job search. And then I don't want to be disappointed, right? So I actually always filter by last, my, the last month. I like to keep it fresh, okay? So when we go into the demo, you're gonna start to see the additional filters that you can, that you can, you can see. One of my other favorite ones is that now you can actually filter by remote work or work from home options. So again, if this is something that you're looking for or a driver into your next job opportunity, then you can filter by those jobs, okay? You'll be able to save your jobs as well. So that way you can go back to them. And um, well, you can either bookmark them here or as we've learned, take that application link and put it back on um, your, your Google Sheets, okay? So you can either save it here for later, okay? Maybe you wanna bookmark it so that way you can take a look at it later or apply later. This is, this is where, this is how you can do it. You'll also be able to like once, and I, I recommend this, that you click on the alert button um, only after you've applied all the filters, okay? So once you feel like, okay, I've got all the filters down, I'm getting a really good um, list of jobs that I wanna apply for, you can, you can hit the alert button. And what's going to happen is that Google's going to start emailing you job opportunities as they get posted. So this is another great way for you to be on top of those fresh job opportunities that are new. Google will do its job to alert you anytime it finds a job based on the criteria and the filters that you've applied, okay? All right, so let's do a live demo. I'm curious to see if anybody, if there was anybody brave uh, to volunteer um, a job. So what I'm looking for is a job title and the city that you're looking in. Okay. So can I can I get a volunteer? Um, project manager Sunnyvale. Oh, I just actually just gave a webinar to the city of Sunnyvale this morning. That's great. Um, okay. So project manager Sunnyvale. Can you, uh, Cherry? Can you um, add if there is an industry perhaps that you're looking for? or like within tech. Okay, perfect. All right, here we go. So let's do a live demo. Okay, so we are gonna go in and I'm gonna go into the search and I'm gonna type in project tech, let me see here, tech project manager in Sunnyvale, California. Okay, perfect. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bunch of ads. <laughs> so here, okay, so um, we, we, we've got um, a list. We've got a list going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand the list because I want to view the, the expands mode, right? And so immediately here on the left-hand side, I can see that Google pulled a couple of job opportunities from LinkedIn, another one from JobServe. Um, uh, LinkedIn, Dice, right? So you can see, right, where, where they're coming from. Now, quickly, I'll, re I'll just see, since we're in the live demo, I can show you that um, because we gave a very specific title, Google pretty much read our mind and, and knew it, but we can actually go in and actually, you know, and there may be a senior position that Terry's looking for, right? So you can do, um, because I don't even think you said, you just said project manager, not a particular level, right? So this is perfect. So you, you know, they may be looking for director positions or they may be looking for a senior role. 
right? So you can start to apply all these filters. We know that we're looking in the city of Sunnyvale, but we're willing to go 15 miles outside of the city, right? No one's trying to go past, you know, with gas prices the way that they are, no one's trying to drive more than 15 miles, right? Uh, we can go by date posted, which is the, that's my rule. If this, you don't have to apply this, but I love just to look at the past month. It could even ask filter by requirements, right? So we know that they are an experienced um, tech manager. So we're going to say we're senior, we're, we're looking for the higher opportunities, right? Now here, what I like about this filter is that you may actually filter by companies that you want to work for. So with Google being, you know, a, a, you know, a big company, you may filter by just Google roles, right? And you can apply as many companies that you're interested in working. So again, highly, highly customizable, okay? So once, once I feel comfortable, remember I can go and let Google know to alert me anytime it gets job opportunities that meet these criteria. okay? So as you can see, let's, now we're just gonna quickly click on one so that way we can see the, the level of detail that it includes. So remember, these are all the platforms that I can apply for this job at. It's giving you the, the overview of, of, and this is gonna come in handy later when, we're, when we go over the resumes. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick that I do, okay? You can see, um, you know, I like to learn about the company culture. So I love that it has like, it's pulling all of the reviews and directly into one place because, you know, we wanna work in great places, right? So. Reviews are a fantastic way for you to get a sense for the company culture, what people are saying about, you know, that company. So again, I'm going to go ahead, this particular role, I'm, I'm interested. So I'm going to save it right now because I'm going to maybe compile a list and then I'm going to decide which ones I'm going to apply for. Okay. So again, this is the way that the Google search functionality would work. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful for you um, seeing it in, in a, live demo format. Okay, so now let's move on to Google Docs. So Google Docs. So here, what I wanna share with, with you is very similar to how we access Google Sheets. You would go and you would go to the application and then find Google Docs. Now, I forgot to mention, and I'll, when I go back to the demo, remind me to show you um, templates on the Google Sheets. But what I like about Google Sheets and Google Docs is that it's going to offer you a variety of templates so that way you don't have to start from scratch, okay? And so once we go into the, the demo, I'm gonna show you that under the resume tab, okay, you can actually select um, from different templates, okay? I like to reference those templates because there may be areas or sections that I need for one job versus the other, or you know, I want to maybe um, update my, my, my format from time to time, okay? So I'm gonna go into the, um, the demo now because I wanna show you guys um, some of these features, okay? In, in, in real time. So before I forget, I mentioned that I wanted to share how the templates work in Google Sheets. So even though I do use it for the job search, I, when I travel, I'm, I, I, I love to organize my trips. I actually book all my restaurants and things like that. So I actually have a whole Excel file for like my trips. You know, I went to Mexico City not too long ago and I had a whole list. But when you go under the, the in case you don't know this, I'm sharing this with you because I think it could be helpful if you're not familiar with this tool that un when I go under file and under new, and I go from, and I select from template gallery, what you're gonna find here is that Google has a ton of templates for everything that you need, okay? You could do, to you can create to-do lists, you can create annual budgets, you can create a calendar, you can create um, uh, a team roster. So there's a lot of great templates, so that way you don't have to start from scratch, even invoices, okay? so. Let's move on to Google Docs because Google Docs is the same way, okay? So under Google Docs, I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna share with you that under the file number, very similar, 
if I go to new and then from template, what you're also going to find is that it has a bunch of um, documents that are templates, right? So even if you need an NDA or even if you need uh, a proposal template, if you need legal um, um, templates, privacy policies, right? So again, there's a lot here going on, but today we're going to focus on resumes. So there's there's several options here for you to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and just keep it simple and select Swiss. And what you're going to notice is it's going to create a file for me. I'm going to go in and rename this to Israel Cerna resume. And the beauty of this is that it's automatically saving into my Google Drive. Okay. Now, again, why I like these templates is that I don't have to start from scratch. Okay. I'm not a graphic designer. <laughs> so this is super helpful because it's a nice clean template, right? And this is how resumes look these days. You'll notice like there's a lot of use of white space. There's these um, sections are sectioned off, you know, so that it's easy to read and easy on the eye. And it also, like I mentioned earlier, it can include sections that you not had not thought about like awards. Okay. So if I go in and I just start to, you know, click around, what you're going to notice is that this is highly customizable. Okay. By the way, when it comes to these templates, so some things don't feel that just because it's in here, it's, it's, it has to stay. Like, for example, I never include my address anymore. I include the city that I'm located in because that may be relevant. Um, but I don't include my address. I think those types of things are no longer needed, right? Um, I do include on my resume a link to my LinkedIn because I find that when a recruiter or somebody who's going to be interviewing me can see and can access my LinkedIn, there's nothing better than if we have a mutual contact, right? Especially if it's like an industry contact because they're going to say like, oh, okay, so this, this, this guy's already well-connected or knows people. So I, I purposely include a link to my LinkedIn because I would hope that when they click on it, that they can see that we have mutual contacts, okay? So you can customize this, you can change the colors, right? Maybe orange is not your thing, green is my thing, I may change it. I would, I would not get carried away with the colors too. And you're gonna learn this in next month's webinar when we review and critique um, resumes that I think one or two colors is, is good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go past that, okay? Now, with very similar to like Google Sheets, um, you can also share this file. So if you are counting on a buddy or a family member to proofread, get a proofreader, please. There's nothing more embarrassing than sending a resume with typos, okay? So you get one or two people to proofread. And the cool thing is like when I would, if I would send this to my niece, Yulisa, you know, I can give her different um, editing capabilities. <laughs> get a proofreader for sure. You, I can give my niece, Yulisa, um, different editing ca capabilities. I can give her um, ability to own the document. I can give her ability to edit. Um, she can only view. So there's different things that, different capabilities, right? Now, if we go back to this tech job search, so one tip that I will give you, and you're going to learn this next month when we talk about um, how to customize your resumes for machine learning for AI. A lot of these new companies are using machine learning technology to scan resumes, okay? Now, one pro tip that I'll share with you is that to get through those filters, because those are real, remember it's machines that are now scanning your resume, okay? To filter out those that qualify. So what's gonna be important here is that you use their keywords, use their language. Because if they're telling you exactly here what they're looking for, I'm not saying that you're copying because you want to match the resume. That's not what I'm saying, or, or match the job description. What I'm saying is that you're taking some of their wording, their keywords, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, copy some of this just so that I can show you what I mean. So I would take this, the qualifications piece, and I would, paste it because what you could do is I could, um, let me show you this. I could scan or uh, highlight this and then add a note for myself. 
okay? I like to copy it over because as I'm customizing the resume for that particular job, I'm using, or I'm gonna try to use as many of their keywords as possible because this is what the machine is scanning for. It's looking for those keywords like three plus years experience, management experience. So remember these keywords are gonna be critical to get through those filters, okay? And this is why I like to do this for myself and um, keep my notes <laughs> on the right-hand side. But again, um, you know, if I were to you know, share the final template with my niece and I would say, hey, Yulisa, can you go in and just proofread? She could also um, make um, editing recommendations here. So she could edit and she could tell me, um, uh, she could either rewrite it, rewrite it for me or leave me a note and I could either accept it or not accept it, okay? So there's a lot of benefits to this because I truly, truly feel like nowadays, um, job search, job searches, interviewing resumes, it is a group effort. Like I need emotional support. <laughs> <laughs> like I need somebody to have my back, you know, and I don't know if you guys feel that way, but it's like, I, I like to have like my, like my trustworthy people that I know are going to go in and, and, you know, make comments and be honest with me on my resume. So I would um, encourage you to maybe consider the same thing and to, if anything, if anything, get yourself a proofreader. Okay. Now, for this last section, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go back to my presentation. Give me one sec. Um, where did it go? Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about Google Meet. Give me one sec while I pull this up. And I wanna talk to you about Google Meet because I would say that a lot of employers these days are either starting the interview process or completing the interview process remotely, okay? Um, I think a lot of companies realize how productive one can be just conducting interviews instead of flying you in or having you to be away for two or three days. They can get an interview done in a minute, in like hours, right? So why I'm sharing Google Meet is because it is a tool that Google offers. And this allows you to um, schedule, to conduct um, meetings, just like the platform that we're in today, very similarly, where you can create you know, a meeting. Now, I'm not sharing this with you because the chances are that you're not gonna have control over what platform they use, right? Why I'm sharing this with you is because you can use Google Meet to practice with somebody, okay? I think it's a great tool, especially if you're, a first timer interviewing over Zoom, it can be overwhelming, right? There's a lot to it, right? Or you just wanna practice your interview with a friend, right? So Google Meet can be a great tool for you to use to be able to prepare for your interviews, okay? Now, some best practices when it comes to just, uh, Zoom, uh, just using um, video or being interviewed is I would say first and foremost, and it's not on here, I think it's fair and important for you to remember that this is new, okay? We haven't been doing this for a long time. There may be instances where the HR department is actually doing this for the first time themselves or where the person interviewing you may be the first time that they're doing this online. So if you're feeling nervous, if you're feeling anxious, that's natural, right? And things can happen. The internet can go out <laughs> any minute now, right? And I, what, what am I gonna do? I, I don't control the internet, right? So things can happen. I think that there's also a little bit more flexibility that comes with the online interview because we don't have control over the internet, okay? But what you do have control over are things like making sure that we're facing the camera, okay? I, when I was interviewing, I had a smile right above, a little note that said smile because interviews are intense, okay? Interviews are intense and so because we're not in person reading each other's energy. You know, this means that this little box that you see right now is, is the impression that I'm making. So, uh, you know, it may feel a little extra, but I think that we have to be a little bit extra because the reality is if you were doing an interview in person, you would be able to confidently shake that person's hand and be able to, you know, share with them how excited you are or how grateful you are. 
and we don't have that handshake anymore. So now body language is important. Smiling, you know, I think it's also important and it may feel awkward at first, but, and I had to learn this as I started to conduct more and more webinars to speak slowly. We don't know the bandwidth that's happening on their end, right? So taking your time, you know, is, is, is also um, key. You know, right now I have a ring light that's facing me. That's only because I don't have a window that's, that, can, that can light me up. So I do rely on a ring light to make sure that I'm illuminated, okay? And I understand that not all of us have the luxury of having a, an office at home. Sometimes we may, be, we may have to conduct an interview in our bedroom because that is the only quiet place that you have. What I'm telling you is that don't feel this pressure to have to have this like, you know, high level camera or anything like that. But what I do think is important is that if you are gonna do an interview in your bedroom, that you just pay attention to what's behind you, okay? There's nothing wrong with showing your bed. Just make sure your bed is made, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying, <laughs> okay? Um, and then, you know, um, I think practicing is so important. And I think that's why, you know, a tool like Google Meet can really help you, okay? I talked a little bit about this, but I think it's also important to highlight and uh, find ways to showcase your soft skills, okay? Remember, by this point, chances are they already read your resume. They already know the questions that they're going to have for you. And one thing that I always recommend is take your time to master your glowing introduction. And what do I mean by that? Okay. If I'm introducing Maisha and I say, can we just start by, you know, having you tell us a little bit about you? That should not come to us as a surprise to you. Like you shouldn't be fumbling over your words in your own introduction. So when I say master your glowing introduction, you should have that down. It should, it should come so naturally to you. It should be the thing that you, it's like, is Rosarna, you know, a partner marketer, been doing marketing for the last, whatever it is, you know, there's going to be the things that you're going to want to say, okay? This isn't about memorizing your cover letter either, okay? This is a short, sweet introduction, okay? Now, the other thing that I think is important is that you should study the motivational questions. Things like, why did you apply? Why the interest in our company, right? Those things are things that you should already know. And there's reasons why you apply for those companies, right? You like the role. You like that it was remote. You liked the benefits. So understanding and, and really, why I say this, by the way, is that I think it's interesting that, and it's our nerves, don't get me wrong. I've done tons of interviews and I know that oftentimes it's just nerves, but we're surprised with some other questions. And I think by now, you know, we, we know more or less, right. What's, what's, what's going to be asked. So I think it's important for you to prepare to your research, you know, really go in there and, and um, study the company. If they just got acquired a year ago, I think that should be something that you should know because that could be something that you bring up in like, those quiet moments where you have time to, you know, dialogue, like, by the way, you know, I, I, I read that you guys got acquired last year. How, how is that going for you? Like, how cool is that? Right? Like that you knew that first of all, but also that you asked me how I feel about it, you know? So things like that are going to be important as you, and this is by the way, a great way to show your soft skills. Okay. It shows that you're researched. It shows that you're ready, that you're prepared, that you're paying attention. Okay. All right. We covered a lot. I've been talking for the last <laughs> 50 minutes now or 45 minutes. We covered Google, Google Sheets, Google Search, Google Docs, Google Meet, okay? It's a lot of great tools. I'm gonna provide you with my next steps of how to get started. Maybe, maybe one of the things you learned today was that you have to organize yourself, okay? So take whatever you can from these next steps and from the recommendations that, that I just shared with you. If you're interested in building your own skills, again, like I mentioned, getting, trying to get certified, adding additional skills to your resume, um, Google offers these trainings and certifications, okay? I'm including also links to all of the products that I talked to you about today, okay? So again, I'm gonna remind you that we are hosting a webinar series. This is one of three. I will be back in April for improve your resume with practical strategies. All right, 
So with that, any questions, any impressions, first of all, I'd love to, I'd love to hear any impressions in the chat. Takeaways, the one thing that maybe you did take away or want to do after the webinar, I'm always um, happy to hear those things. Maisha, any impressions from you? I, I saw you were active in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm very active in the chat. <laughs> um, no, this was amazing. There's so many different functionalities of Google that I, I did not know. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Google Drive user, so everything cool. is there. Um, nice. But even with the templates, I knew the templates, um, but they, they've grown with templates. So there's so much more that they offer. There's now. so much more, uh, right. And it's good to know that the templates that you use on Google um, like you mentioned, the the uh, ATS systems, a lot of them are hard to get through just because of the template that you use. And so using one from Google is one that you know would kind of go through the system because mm -hmm. what people don't know about ATS is tables don't work. There's oh, certain yeah. fonts that don't go. So it's one of those things that's hard to get through. Right. So, we are going to cover that. We are going to cover that next on the next one. We're going to talk about fonts and why th yeah. that matters. Right. 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 Yeah. There's a lot. Well, so this is this is absolutely beautiful. It's so wonderful. I just dropped the <laughs> the one for April nineteenth. Um, that's the webinar link. So it's a webinar. Um, that's the link for that. Um, and I'll drop the one for May in there as well. Um, we are um, going to offer the Google certification. So I'm just cool. excited about that. Nice. So that's coming soon. I'm really going into this partnership. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, if, if, does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, you guys can come off of mute. Feel free to come off of mute. Um, this is the only one that'll be a meeting style. The next one will be webinar style. Carl, I know you have a question. You always have a question for me. <laughs> I saw a lot of nodding from Carl, which I appreciated, Carl. I, I appreciate you being on camera. <laughs> Um, Noel, can you drop the digital skills training? Yes, I will get that. I'm actually on the site. So digital skills training. Let's get that for you one second. Carl, you ready? Yeah, I am. Uh, I saw Israel digging down when he was in, um, when you, when, when Derek put up the uh, project manager in Sunnyvale. Yeah. Can yeah, you, yeah. Can you do a, uh, a quick dig, dig down a little deeper, deeper? Oh, real quickly? on, on uh, what specifically, like with the jobs or the- Yeah, the, the jobs. Thing? Okay, the jobs. yeah, yeah, let me know, so- Real quick, I'm not trying, you know, I don't yeah. want to take too much so, time. Yeah, there. Yeah, okay, so when you say like, are you talking like filtering and stuff, like drilling down even more because, is that do, what you mean? Do the, do the job, do the companies come up or did you hit something that 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 made the companies come up? That yeah, Google scan for those. So uh, like these right here, like on like here on the screen. Yes. Or yeah. So that's what Google scans. So remember, Google, the minute that I hit on the search that I tapped those keywords, it actually went out and pulled everything that it found related to the job that I was looking for. So if it's online, if these jobs are posted online, which a hundred percent of them are then Google's gonna pull it for you, depending on, and you can see, right? So initially our search was tech project manager in Sunnyvale, but then we started to filter out because sometimes it may be too many, it may be hundreds of searches and you're kind of like, okay, I need to start prioritize, right? I need to go with, maybe start with the title first. I just okay. think that's, I, you know, and I don't know how you guys go about it, but for me, it's like, you know, titles are very difficult because sometimes a director role at a bank may not be the same thing as a director role in like a software company, right? So titles, I think for me, oh, it's hard. And so that's why um, I like to filter by um, requirements, you know? Because mm -hmm. if, if, if under requirements, if, I, if oh. I do three years plus, then it's gonna, you can see like even just with this, right? This search pulled a technical role versus a senior role versus a director role, you know? So this is why I, I, I love the filters. Good point, good point. Cool, I see that, Maisha, you dropped the link to the, the, the digital skills, that's great. Do you, you know, this is a, one of the questions that comes up and it will probably come up in the resume, but you know, one way for you to keep active 
in between jobs is to work on those certifications because you can mm-hmm. highlight that. So if, if you have a period where you're feeling like, okay, you know, um, I don't know how to uh, or what to include in that, um, that gap, right? Well, if you, got a, if you got a digital skill training in between, like I would highlight that. I would, I would say, by the way, if you notice there is a gap between jobs, but I use that opportunity to get certified on Google ads or whatever these skills are that you're trying to acquire. Cool. Nice. Great question. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Israel. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, uh, wait, we've got one more question here. Okay. Is there a way to find direct hires, not recruiters? Is there a way to find direct hires, not recruiters? So the actual manager is hiring for the role instead of the recruiters that post mm. for the role. That's tough because it's all going to depend on who posted the job, right? Most often they're coming from a recruiter, um, depending on the company. But I could be a small business, for example, and go on and post. And so if you, if that, in that instance, you would actually be, you know, um, connecting with a direct hire. So, but yes, I don't, I know what you mean. Um, I think the question is, can you filter by, by saying I'm only wanting to deal with direct hires? I don't, I don't think that that's a filter, at least, at least a type employer. Well, the, that's the other thing too, by the way, I know there's students, but you can also um, filter by internship. Um, company type. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm, I, I'm going to look it up, but I'm almost confident that you can't filter by recruiter versus um, direct hire. Cool. Hey, Israel, there's a follow-up question to that. This is Derek Lawson, not, hey, Derek. Cherie, not Cherie Lawson, Carl. Ah. Okay. Oh. All right, brother Carl. I, love, I still love you, man. It's all right. So, <laughs> I, and I don't know if you know the answer to this. It, it's more like how, how does Google get the jobs to bring back in its search, right? Yeah. And, and especially if it's the direct, like I, I'm at a small company right mm-hmm. we may not have a google account no but your website uh-huh. right but our websites mm-hmm. or you guys actively mm-hmm. you know kind of i won't say trolling just to say investigating you know and and you go oh here's some opening <laughs> i don't want to give away the yeah here, no i know what you know, mean i know what you mean you, so you we are not oh. trolling but okay. we are <laughs> scanning your website okay? okay so to to you know one of the things that i like to clarify with like my um when I'm talking about like Google search for like entrepreneurships and stuff like that, or entrepreneurs is mm-hmm. first and foremost that it may not seem uh, obvious to some people, but, and it may actually offend some people when I say this, but I, I, I like to say this because, you know, the, re- the thing is that Google is not the internet, right? So Google is a search engine that actually scans the internet to find you answers to the search query that you're typing in, right? So Google's job is to find answers. So think of Google like a high power librarian that's not only going to take you to the book, but that librarian would have read the book and would be able to tell you exactly what page the information that you're looking for. So that's Google in a nutshell, right? It scans and it indexes websites um, every second of the day, okay? Now, if you're a small business owner, for example, and I talk about this when I give my workshop on, on websites, is that some businesses may you may want to launch a website because it may be a way to recruit um, mm-hmm. uh, employers and a way for you to be able to post job opportunities. Okay, so one thing that you could do, for example, because Google is going to eventually scan your website because that's that's what it's doing, but you can actually use a tool called Google Search Console, and you can actually go to Google and say. Hey, by the way, I added a new page to my website or I added this new section and Google will be like, oh, cool. Thanks. I, I, I'm indexing it. I've read it. I've scanned it. I now know that I can bring this page up. So Google, so Derek, to answer your question, Google is already doing that with the Google bots, but you can actually get ahead of it. If you did publish a, a, a job opportunity on your website, go to Google search console and just report the new section to Google. So that way it starts to show it. Um, as quickly as possible. Okay. So my and my next question to that, of course, is to so you got the recruiters of the world, or you have those who have money, 
who subscribed or is there is there have accounts with these platforms yes right so is there a prioritization right that you have to be concerned about about positions like i'm only going to get zip recruiter and oracle and i'm not going to get you know my company or a smaller company no it's going to factor in um the the job query whatever you typed in so it doesn't google's not going to factor in because they're on an account no it's gonna it's going it Google doesn't care about that company, to be honest with you. It cares about the searcher and that the searcher gets what they need. So the Google is going to do its best to filter based on what you typed in in the job search um, query. Great. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate yep. It. Of course. Yep. No. Great question. All right. Anybody else have questions? Awesome. Well, you guys have been a, a fun crowd. I appreciate the afternoon you spending the afternoon and I, you know, just wanted to wish you all the luck depending on where you are in your job search um, journey. You know, I feel you, I'm with you, you know, find your people, find your support system. <laughs> so make sure um, you uh, copy out those gems that I put down if you didn't take notes. Very, very important to have those gems. Um, and then make sure that you register for the next two sessions that we have scheduled with Israel. I'm excited about them because they are absolutely great. And so this is all new learning stuff for all of us, no matter where you are in your career, student, high school student, undergrad student, grad student, entry-level professional, mid-level professional, or exec. Um, it's all new for all of us because it's just the way that we pivoted. And so just learning something new every day is, is something that I, I strive to do. So I hope that this brought you guys, um, was very helpful for you guys and brought you guys more information um, and ways to use Google, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm all about Google because <laughs> I am an Android user. So it's all about Google. <laughs> so for me, it was like very helpful to learn about these things. And just like Israel, I use the tracker for certain things. So I. I, I do it for my budget, of course, but usually when I'm trying to plan travel, I'll use Excel or, or the Google Sheets to track things to make sure that I know what I'm looking at to compare stuff. So I love, love how it. you use that for your trip. I love it. I see you. I see you. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so make sure that you, again, uh, click on the links that I dropped in the chat. And then I have one more link for you if you are not a National Black MBA member make sure that you join us now we are going to atlanta in september or at the end of september for national conference so um i just dropped this in oops i just dropped this in the chat and uh make sure that you join the local chapter that's nearest you and so it doesn't have to be san francisco unless you're in northern california then you're stuck with me um if you're not in northern california search the chapters that are uh, within the website and find your chapter find your people your community um, but you're always free to join any chapters events we're all virtual um everybody that's a member of the national black nba can join anybody any chapters event so that's the best thing about this so again thank you for spending an hour with us we appreciate your time i will send the recording out within the next hour uh if you want to review and it's also for those who were not able to make it but did register for tonight so we will see you on uh, April, what I said, 19th, 19th. <laughs> at 5 p.m. for the next Grow with Google session. Um, after that, the one in May is on May 3rd because it is Small Business Week. And so we are um, gearing it towards small businesses and entrepreneurs. So feel free to share with your friends if they are business owners because it is some really great information. Um, also tomorrow, if you, do, if you are a business owner, we have um, business certifications. So make sure you join us tomorrow for that, that webinar because it's really good to understand how you need to, how you can become a minority certified business and what it can do for your business. The access, the resources, the contracts, there's a lot that goes into that. So make sure you join us tomorrow. Um, and if you don't have that link, um, just make sure you go to our website. It is on our website, uh, sfnbmbaa.org, which I will put in the chat as well. Um, and visit our calendar that is on there and register for that event tomorrow night. Um, so that is it from me. Uh, I want to say thank you again and have a wonderful Tuesday evening. Thank Thanks you, everyone. So See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care.